I do a lot of my work right here in my basement studio. At this workbench, I have all the tools and equipment that I need for sculpture and other forms of preparation, uh, a mixer, scales, chemicals, brushes, and so forth. The old makeup kit here, though, is what I have to take when I go out on location, and I have to be sure that I've got everything packed in it that I'm going to need, all the colors and other materials for a particular assignment. I always worry about forgetting something. Of course, a makeup artist needs a lot more equipment than that. I have several sets of shells like this that are loaded with a hodgepodge of various kinds of makeup materials, liners, bases, pan sticks, paints. Uh, here, for instance, is a box of uh, noses left over from shows that I've worked on. I keep them because you never know when you're going to need another Cyrano nose or something like that. I guess you can see I'm an old string saver. I find that all kinds of things come in handy for makeup, things that aren't even makeup materials. And I save all these things, and sometimes when I have a makeup problem, I look around at the shelves and find, oh, something I haven't looked at really in years, and, and I find if I mix it with something else that maybe that's the answer to the problem. In this room, I do messy work like plaster casting, and I keep my oven for baking the foam latex. Over here, shelves for work I'm working on currently. Um, and over here are some life masks of actors with whom I've worked. Smith has transformed many a famous face and has worked on every type of makeup there is. But he is best known for his old age makeup techniques, which he has been refining for many years. In 1959, a youthful Michael Rennie was turned into a decrepit old man for the TV showing of The Scarlet Pimpernel. In the same year, viewers saw Sterling Hayden as two men, one a handsome 35, the other a scarred, bitter man of 50. And for a production of Soldier in Love, several characters grew older as the show progressed, among them Gene Simmons. Then, in 1967, Smith changed Hal Holbrook into Mark Twain for the TV special, Mark Twain Tonight. The job required enormous detail due to the many close-ups where Holbrook's face would fill the entire screen. Mr. Holbrook received critical acclaim for his performance, and the makeup won an Emmy Award. But Twain wasn't Smith's last word in old age makeup. In 68, he aged Dustin Hoffman to 120 for the film Little Big Man. So when Little Big Man came along, it was no big decision to want to work with him. I, if I think about why I wanted to work with him, uh, uh, his technical faci facility was obvious to me by then. He had proven himself, that, certainly with me, in terms of his work. Uh, I knew of no other makeup artist who could do that type of prosthetic work, which Little Big Man demanded to do. So I went in, and, and we had to get started about 5 in the morning because we had to be ready to shoot at 10, and it was five hours. So I sat in the chair, and he started to, first thing he did was grease down my hair, which was all right, and then he started to apply this stuff. And uh, though I'm not claustrophobic, I nevertheless got very itchy in about every half hour. I think I needed to at least do some kind of movement. If I had to repeat it, I, I wouldn't want to go through it again as I remember it. It was just one of the worst experiences I ever had. I think for Dick, it's better because he's working every minute, and it, it's somewhat surgical. As a matter of fact, I think the surgeon in him is probably kind of a comparable uh, uh, profession in terms of what he was doing, the, the layers that he put on me. First step in doing a makeup like this is to mold from the actor's face a plaster life mask. Here's Dustin's, and here's what we do with it. On this duplicate, there's a clay sculpture of the old age makeup, uh, which is the most critical stage 
of creating this sort of makeup. All the detail, all the realism that's important to the makeup must be done at this time. I don't like to make a mask in one piece. For technical reasons, I can do a better application if it's in sections. So I, div I divided this face up into about 10 sections. For instance, I take off the clay from the lower lip and chin, and I put it on a duplicate of Dustin's lower lip and chin. And that's where I will do the final modeling of that particular section. And I'll do the same thing with uh, several other pieces of that, uh, of the entire face. At this point, I put a rubber wall around the life mask section with its finished clay sculpture. And I pour plaster uh, within it in order to make the mold. After the plaster is hardened, the mold is opened and all the clay is carefully removed and the mold prepared for the introduction of foam latex. This is beaten up foam latex, which is a mixture of latex and chemicals whipped up. A little of this goes in each mold. It's closed up. The excess comes out and we fill them all very carefully so that there's no air trapped in them. And then they'll be baked. The latex filled molds will be baked in this laboratory oven for about four hours. I'll have to prepare a set for each day's shooting because they can only be used once. Uh, this is the way foam latex pieces look when they've been taken out of the molds. This happens to be a set left over from the filming of the Little Big Man and they were pre-colored somewhat in order to save time in application. Uh, this, is a, uh, this is a little eyelid, which is something I'm rather, rather pleased with because I was able to make them delicately enough to, uh, to actually fold and unfold. I'm putting the pieces on a rubber head of Dustin to show you how they overlap. And also I want to show you what I did with the mouth to make it look old. It's been built out up in here and the chin's built out so that on profile you get that sunken in old man look. This large piece has so many wrinkles in it that I think it must have taken me over a week to do the original sculpture. Uh, it goes on and uh, overlaps the other pieces wraps around and fits in up underneath the eyes and really now starts to make the transformation complete. The next thing to go on is a foam rubber hump. This does two things for Dustin. Shortens up his neck and gives him a profile kind of like an old vulture, really stooped. The headpiece is made out of two overlapping pieces of foam rubber. It uh, most headpieces are made out of plastic, but the foam rubber is a great advantage because you can sculpt in all the detail, uh, wrinkles, uh, a skull structure, veins, and so forth, and you can even implant the hair into it to give a really natural effect. 